Okay, now let's talk about Thorndike's contribution to uh, educational psychology, or particularly from the behaviorist point of view. See, Thorndike defined learning as habit formation. So he was all, he was emphasizing that a lot of things uh, that we do classically from the behaviorist point of view it's due to our habit. So he actually conducted his famous experiment by placing a hungry cat in a box and the cat had an opportunity to escape uh, the box and, and eat the food that's outside the box by pressing a particular liver. So after much trial and error, uh, trial and error, the cat learned that associating by pressing the liver, which is the liver is being the stimulus, the door opens it responds okay so he was he he it was by forming this connection if i get if i do this this will be created so that's how the notion of connectionism came about so the, the because he believes that uh, 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 whether it's a human or an animal the case or the object of study will respond to a stimulus as long as the, the stimulus, the response, it's, it's rewarding uh, in a positive way, or it in many, in some ways, it avoids punishment. So you behave in a particular way to either because you're going to benefit from it or, or you avoid punishment, and you form this connection between this behavior and the outcome. Okay, so that's the notion of connectiv connectivism, or connectionism, sorry. Uh, each time the animal, in this case, each time the animal was put in the box, it took lesser and lesser time to to press the liver and escape the box, because the animal has learned. Based on this experiment, Thorndike proposed a law, which he called uh, his three laws of learning. Okay, the three laws of learning is law of effect, law of exercise, and law of readiness. Now, the law of effect itself, if if a response Example, uh, doing mathematics problem is followed by a pleasurable, rewarding experience. Example, the student is praised by the teacher or he feels good, his parents reward him. The response would be strengthened and become habitual. Okay, so that's law of effect. Now, the law of exercise. Connection between stimulus. Example, getting the right answer and response. In this case, doing maths again, huh? it will be strengthened. The response will be strengthened with practice and weakened when practice is discontinued. So the law of exercise talks about if someone repetitively perform a, a task, this connection will become stronger. And obviously, if the reverse is true, if if the connection, if the exercise is reduced, the connection becomes weaker. And the third one is the law of readiness. Certain behaviors are more likely to be learned than others because the nervous system of the organism is ready to make the connection leading to satisfying state of affair. So as, as from a Thorndike's perspective, you need to create an opportunity for the connection to take place. So you need to prepare the environment. You have to create the stimulus and response to take place. Like in his experiment, the law of readiness was the cat being hungry. Because the cat was hungry, it needed to escape the box. So it was experimenting with certain kinds of behaviors until the behavior that gave it satisfaction. So from Thorndike's perspective, if you do not prepare the environment in a meaningful way, learning cannot take place because you do not fulfill the notion of law of readiness. Okay. So let's review again. What Thorndike really mentioned was three uh, his notion of connectionism. Connectionism when, when you repeat a particular task, there are connections main, made in your mind or, or something like that that allows the behavior to be consistently reproduced. And he, he talked about the three laws of readiness, which he calls the three or three laws of learning. The law of effect, the law of exercise, and the law of readiness. Now, how is law of effect? Is if a response is followed by a pleasurable, rewarding experience, the response will be strengthened and become habitual. Okay. Second one, the law of exercise. Connection between stimulus 
and result with participation and weaken when participation is discontinued. And the third one is law of readiness. Certain behaviors are more likely to be learned than others because nervous systems of the organism is ready to make the connection, leading it to a satisfying state of affair in preparation for action. So these are the three laws uh, that he has derived from this notion of connection. Three laws of learning that he derived from his notion of connectionism. Now, Pavlov uh, was a Russian psychologist. Uh, his full name was Ivan, Pavel, Ivan Pavlov. Where he introduced the notion of classical theory, class, uh, the theory of classical conditioning through his experiment. I, I'm, I'm sure you, many of you all have heard of the Pavlov dog experiment. Now, let me quickly describe what that experiment was. So, what Pavlov did was he introduced food to this dog. Uh, so every time the dog was hungry, food was introduced, and just before eating, the dog will salivate, right, because of the desire, appetite for the food. Then he systematically introduced the notion uh, the sound of a bell. So what happened was when the dog was hungry, he introduced a, a bowl of food and rang the bell. So obviously the dog now has associated the bell with feeding time. So then in in a subsequent experiment, when you rang the bell. Without the food being present, the dog salivated because it associated uh, the food and the bell as, as time to feed. So in this case, uh, he, he was introducing the notion of the, f uh, the food being the stimulus and the response is the dog salivating. But because there was a neutral stimulus, that is the bell, was able to replace the stimulus, the food as being the stimulus. So the notion of stimulus, a uh, neutral stimulus could be introduced. So how does it relate to education is, for example, if I was to go into a class and I was to reward my kids with chocolates every time they perform the behavior. And I also continuously praise them. So to some extent, although they started working because they wanted the immediate reward of the chocolate, subsequently I could replace the chocolate with just praising my students. However, uh, Pavlov did uh, highlight uh, if when the organism realizes that the sound of the bell, in his, ex in his case, when the orga organism realizes that the sound of the bell does not result in food, the animal will stop salivating and the behavior will be extinct. So, but the, the whole notion of classical conditioning was that we use a, a transitional uh, reward to condition a, a particular organism, or in our case, a student, to able to produce a desired uh, behavior, and we replace the desired stimulus with a neutral stimulus subsequently. Okay, so I, I like to reiterate the a perfect example for this is you walk into a class of young children, or in any case, any class, and you start tempting them to participate in uh, in your experiment in your activity by giving them what they want, simultaneously introducing a neutral stimulus. Uh, a classic case will be giving them chocolate and asking them if you do this, I'll give you a chocolate, uh, a, a, a piece of candy, and then simultaneously keep praising them for it for their work while well, doing a good job, and then systematically you can reduce the the frequency of feeding them candy or chocolate and then continuously praise them. So now you have re replaced uh, a stimulus with a neutral stimulus and keep the conditioning going.